uh, we just hauled out the ingredient out of the water. Yep, we decided to survey the boat ourselves. And it was her first time out of the water. <laughs> In 10 years, <laughs> yeah. right? All right, here we are for the hammer test. Yeah. Uh, Julie and I both have no idea what we're doing. Previously on Sailing Ramona. Just reached in one reef on the bay. I feel bad that I'm not there getting to know your family and your friends and your grandpa and everybody, but this trip has been invaluable. On this episode, we finally decide if the Viking-inspired Inga 38 is the boat we will sail from California to our home in Japan. And here she is. Yeah. This is Barcelona. Over there is the sea. Where are we? We're in Mare Magnum. Back from Africa, there was just a few more days left in Spain before heading to the U.S. <laughs> Hola. Hey, you want to say something? Yeah. Oh, very good. Very good? <laughs> Finally making up for lost time with Julia's family. She's eating some snails. <laughs> and sharing some stories of my passage to Africa. Another kind. I don't miss you guys. Fine. <laughs> okay, so you need a five to start the game. That's all you need to see. <laughs> we'll show you more later. <laughs> Actually, there was one more person who had been patiently waiting to meet Tyler, even though time was not on his side. Do you remember any English? You can take his eyes out of English. Yes, yes. No. No, you're not sure in Spanish. It's in Mal. I only know Spanish in Mal. It was pretty amazing that I was actually able to meet Julie's grandpa given that he had just celebrated his 101st birthday. And just like that, it was already time to go back. Welcome to the Ingrid 38. It may or may not be our boat. Hug this side, Chief. You're good. So far, we've spent about $600 on her. Take your time. Taking her out of the water. Thanks to that guy right there, the charges about an extra 60 bucks. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, she's a beast. We had been preparing to do the survey ourselves. But soon we realized maybe there's a reason why people pay hundreds of dollars to have someone who knows what they're doing inspect their boat. Yeah. Uh, Julie and I both have no idea what we're doing. We're just we're just hammering the boat. <laughs> so you can hear when there's bulkheads and pretty obvious things, but we're not exactly sure what we're listening for. Ever so slight movement, and then it turns effortlessly, and no forward and back movement at all. The bonding system seemed pretty well thought out which basically just means that all the little metal bits below the waterline are electrically connected. It's a way to stop electrolysis from happening, eating away the metal from the boat, which nobody wants. It's kind of busted through the paint here and you can actually see the fiberglass. So it seems all metal parts on the boat are electrically connected. Like many things, there are arguments both in favor of and against bonding systems like this. The bob stay is quite nice. It's actually bolted right to the front of the boat. There's the bobstay bolts. All the chain is bundled up here down low, which is great for weight. It also doubles as a protection if you were to hit something. Rub rails are a bit rotten in some spots. Not that many through holes. I think we counted six total below the water through holes, which is not too bad. There currently is no depth gauge, but this is where it would be mounted, so we should be able to swap it out without having to do anything to the hull itself. There were a few blisters on the hull. But we weren't too worried. The rudder, on the other hand, 
So we made a quick video call to Andy from 59 North to ask for some advice. He said it wasn't a big issue. Pretty much all boats of this age have them. There was also a chance that the rudder had filled with water, which was the worst case scenario. But it wasn't something to be too concerned with and could be repaired if we needed to. We are learning more and more every day, but it's been a bit of a trial by fire throughout this whole process. It really is thanks to our friends and mentors that we have been able to make some fairly informed decisions along the way. But for us, the biggest plus for this boat was the work the previous owners had done inside. In 2010, the boat received a new engine, all new electrical, new teak interior, water maker, and quite a bit more. While we knew we'd have a bit of a project ahead, when comparing to many of the other boats in our price range, the inside felt like a clean slate. More like starting with a new boat, not something with a rat's nest of wiring or sketchy DIY repairs that have built up over the last 40 years. No, she wasn't perfect. And especially after our quote unquote survey, we realized that a lot would need to be done to the exterior of the boat before we'd feel comfortable sailing across the Pacific Ocean with her. But in the end, we still felt she was the one for us. We could see her potential in the near future, not some five-year project that we'd never get finished. So we told the owner that our previous offer was still standing. We just needed a couple more days to figure out if we could arrange everything we needed to to buy her. All right, day one, we'll see. See if, uh, how much money I have in a few days and we'll know if we bought it or not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. fun was not over yet. Now we had to make sure that this crazy plan of ours was actually feasible. We'd have just about 24 hours after taking ownership to set sail about 300 nautical miles south. There are very few protected areas to anchor or seek shelter. So the most likely scenario was at least a three-day non-stop sail down to LA. After all my recent sailing in Japan over the last couple years, and the passage was 59 North, I was feeling pretty confident we could do it. Not me. I still know close to nothing about sailing. Oh yeah, and we had no autopilot either. It started to become pretty clear that the smart thing to do would be to find another crew member to join us, and fast. Julia, good morning. Good morning. What's the latest with the Ingrid? We gotta get used to it. Okay. So I got yeah. a message on the quarter deck, the wonderful social media platform from uh, 59 Degrees North. A guy named Benjamin said he would be happy to, to join us, so he's gonna come. Yeah, he's gonna, join. he's gonna hopefully join us a week from today. Maybe we'll set sail on the boat we don't own yet. Yeah. It took a little convincing for him to have faith in this crazy plan. But in the end, he said yes. We contacted several marinas in the LA area. Marina Shipyard at Long Beach was super helpful and opened the spot for us. A rigger nearby agreed at last minute as well. All we had left now was to organize the towing company to bring her to my mom's property where she would stay while we were in Japan. We, we, yesterday uh, we called the transporters and they had told us previously that we should give them like one or two weeks notice and yesterday they said they cannot do it for two months and <laughs> we are flying back to Japan in two weeks. <clears throat> yeah, I started calling and trying to figure out what we're going to do. I don't know what's going on in Southern California, but it seems like boat hauling services are a dying breed. And we finally found a solution, maybe? A guy that can move the boat, but he doesn't have a truck that can pull it that far. But he has a, a property in Long Beach where he can put it up for us until he can move it to San Diego. So that's the current plan. It all sounded a little sketchy. But we figured, what the heck? Let's give it a try. <laughs> I told you I could be stubborn about it. 
Uh, well, today is February the 21st. Yesterday was February 19th, the one year anniversary of Bob Sheets passing. Also the day that we signed the contract for the Ingrid. So we are now almost officially boat owners. We haven't paid yet, but <laughs> we've committed. Yeah, a lot of things had to come together for this to happen, and it's really fitting for it to happen on that day. And we had a lot of uh, uncertainties and, and all that, but once we signed the contract, everything just kind of felt right. On the drive from San Francisco to Monterey, we scrambled to get everything done so the boat could be ready to start sailing immediately. How's your brain right now? Melted. Me too. Yeah. Where, but... um, my heart and my mind are exhausted. But how do you feel after arriving where we are right now? No, great, great. Do you feel like we still made the right decision? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you don't? No, I do. Okay. I'm just getting your, getting the reaction. This is where, tell us where, where we are. I know our brains are fried, but we'll We're enjoy. in Monterrey Marina, and it's the first time that we've been um, we've seen her since we purchased her. Yeah. Yeah. Our baby. And yeah. <laughs> and here she is. Yeah. The Ingrid, aka soon to be Ramona Ray. Ramona Ray. Yeah. February twenty second, two thousand twenty two. Two 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 two. We'll have to fix her up. She already needs a little tender loving care. I think she's happy. <laughs> First night in the Ingrid. First night in the Ingrid. Is it cozy? Yeah, it is cozy. Mm. It is cold too. It's, cold. it's not. It's not cold so far. Let's see. Mm. I mean, it is cold, but. Uh, T minus one day until we're planning to leave. Also, day one on the boat and kind of jumping around on projects. Yeah, I think we're going to do pretty good. I just ordered the impeller. That was a bit of a tough thing to find. We wanted to swap it out just to be safe. So, we have insurance on the boat. Last night went through. Oh, I do need to do that though. I need to like sign in and pay or whatever. Uh, we have a lift arranged. Uh, the problem with the lift is it can just barely pick up our weight, so we're hoping that'll be not an issue. That's on the 3rd. Benjamin's coming tonight. Uh, we leave tomorrow. Yeah, kind of crazy. All right, back to cleaning. So we're at the back of the boat now. Julia's still scrubbing hard. So we have to come up with a clever device, which will uh, catch the water in a bucket, and then we can dump it. And we've locked those scuppers. You recording? Yes. <laughs> so we are setting up lifelines uh, <clears throat> temporarily in the shrouds. Luckily, this boat is a catch, so it has lots of shrouds. Mm -hmm. So plenty of things to attach to, so I think it'll be fine. There's no bow uh, pulpit, I guess it's called, to climb out on or to walk on to get to the head sail. So I put some ropes down there. They're not really that great, but they'll hopefully kind of catch us, give us something more grab onto. Oh. Hi. What do you think can happen if I just go a little bit over there? Oh. What? They have a tiny tail. Look at that. Can you see it? Oh. <laughs> I didn't know it. Wow. The following day, Ben would be here and we'd set sail on our maiden voyage. <laughs> From now on, we'd have only one task. To just sail. No boats? Mm -hmm. We're saying goodbye. It's our first time leaving the dock and big voyage ahead. How about on the left? Okay. Bye, Monterey. Nice. She's really good going forward.
Yeah, it's over there. So yeah, exactly. So I'm gonna do a I'm come out wide. I might do a right turn and just do a full loop just to kind of scope it out. Okay. And then slowly come in. Tie. All the lines are in the boat. Yeah. How's crew morale? Oh, 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 oh. November 24th. Finally underway. Day one. Enjoying an excellent wrap from Julia. Yeah, we got Benjamin here, saved the day. He came came out of nowhere and, and helped us crew our maiden voyage. Happy to. Thank you so much. Beautiful boat. Good weather window. Yeah. The sun is sparkling off the Pacific. Couldn't ask for more. <laughs> yeah, we'll tidy up all these lines in a second, but we got the Genoa, Staysail, Maine, and the Mizzen all up. And a big old tiller. She's flopping around a bit, but she seems to be more or less holding her course. Uh, yeah, ready for an overnight. See how we do. Alright, we've got some some peanut MMs from Benjamin. He said that's our favorite, and we got those. And he lasted two hours before opening them up. Got Julie on the tiller for the first time, really. Just hit 9.1 knots. 9.2. 9.2. 9.2. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. The anchor is very stable, very comfy. It's taking care of us. This is a great time of night. Yeah, it is. What do we got going on down here, Ben? We're making up, we're making some tea on our makeshift stove here. Shine some light on the situation here for you to see. We got my wife's camping stove. Thank you very much, Lauren. Save the day for some nice hot tea on a cold night. Yeah. And thank you, Lauren, for letting us borrow your husband. You guys, Not, ben, ben the gimbal. That's right. I'm the human gimbal. Human gimbal. I'm trying to make tea, so I'm trying to keep the boat a bit steady, but I'm failing miserably. No. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm so I'm so worried about that sail just flopping around. Yeah. Why don't we put an anti jab in there? It's gonna be super out of yeah, you can maybe try, but there's not a lot of connection points. That's something to add to mm. our list. Episode. We got our second sunset, day two, third day out at sea, second night. We got a little wind, so I decided to try out the old uh, sheet and tiller trick.
everybody. Hello again. Today we are literally one minute away from our house. Yep, you can see it right there. We were actually editing this video and it was such a beautiful day outside so we decided to go for a swim. So the name of our town is Quito. Yeah, it's on the island of Shikoku, which is one of the, the smallest of the four main islands of Japan. And from now on, we hope to show you more and more. Thank you everyone for watching. As always, special thanks to our patrons, whose names I'm going to put over here now. Over where? Over here. In front of us? Yes. Not to the sides? Oh, okay. Patrons over here. And over here. In season two, we actually had the pleasure of meeting some of our patrons, which we'll share with you uh, as we get to season two. And there's actually a patron living here in Tokushima, Hiroki. So we're very excited to meet Hiroki, uh, hopefully in the coming weeks as we're back here in Tokushima. Mm -hmm. So thanks again for watching. See you in the next episode. Arigato. Arigato gozaimasu. Arigato gozaimasu.